Hi, and welcome to my tutorials on Euclid's Elements, Book 7. This tutorial is going to be on Proposition 4 of Book 7. Now, this proposition states that any number is either a part or parts of any number, the less of the greater. So we, before we go on, we need to define what they mean by part and what they mean by parts. Now, the definition from Euclid is a number is a part of a number, the less of the greater, when it measures the greater. So for example, if a is 10 and b is 2, b is a part of a, because we can use b to measure a. And you can imagine that we have a line, and then we have another little line, that's A, this is B. All right, I'm not drawing them very well, but you lay them all out like this, and eventually they line up. And this little line measures the larger line, and hence this is why it is called a part. But parts, the definition of parts, is when a number does not measure the greater number. Now, this is rather vague, but when we go through this particular proposition, you'll see what he means by it. So again, let's do this with an example. We have a equals 10 and b equals to 6. Now, we can let a part of a be 2. So again, we have a line, and we divide it into equal parts, and this being one of the parts. And b will be equal to a multitude of these parts. So although b does not measure a, it is composed of parts of a. So again, if a is equal to 10 and b is equal to 6, then if we let the part of a be equal to 2, then a is measured by 2, and b is also measured by 2. So it is composed of a multitude of the parts of A. So that is the distinction between part and parts. And essentially, what Euclid's proposition is trying to demonstrate is that any number, and this is a whole number or a natural number, this is not real numbers, so we're not dealing with anything like the square root of 2, so any whole number is either a part or parts of the other number that is larger. So somehow we can measure them and compare them. So in other words, if we have two numbers, with A and B, two numbers from the na um, two natural numbers, there exists a P, M, and N where these are also integers such that a is equal to m times p and b equals to n times p. And that is essentially what he's trying to prove, although he continues to use part and parts. But this is effectively what we're going to be demonstrating in this proposition. All right, so this has three distinct proofs depending on various situations. So let's assume that a and b, c are either co-prime or they're not co-prime. So we're going to start with assuming that they are co-prime. In other words, the greatest common denominator between a and b is equal to 1. So let the unit equal 1. a is equal to, can be measured by the unit 1, and bc can also be measured by the unit 1. So therefore, bc is composed of parts of a. And that's it for this particular situation. Now let's look at the situation where the greatest common divisor between a and b is bc. In this case, a is measured by bc, and bc is measured by bc, so bc is one part of That's the second situation. And then finally, the third one, where we have that the greatest common divisor between A and BC is equal to D. So we divide 
BC into parts, where each part is equal to D, and we divide A into parts equal to D. So now D measures BC, and it also measures A. There we go. So D measures A, and D is a part of A, and BC is composed of parts of A. You'll notice that this is not a whole lot different than what we did with the unit, and this is because throughout these propositions, Euclid treats the number one, or the unit, separately from numbers. So there will be a lot of duplication throughout these proofs. Anyway, that's it for this proof. So here we have it summed up. If the greatest common divisor between A and BC is one, then A is measured by U, BC is also measured by U, and therefore BC is composed of parts. If the greatest common divisor is equal to BC, then BC measures A, and BC is simply a part of A. And similarly, if the greatest common divisor of um, A and BC is equal to D, then D measures A, D measures BC, or BC is composed of parts of A. And that's it.